Okay, so um, so my name's Andrew McNaughton. Uh, I've been sailing on, uh, well, sailing really since um, I was uh, forty-seven. Um, when I was a boy, I read about the Winston Churchill, and I read that the ship had blown off her slipway just before the launch. And so, as a as a small boy, I decided that I wasn't going to go sailing on tall ships. But anyway. Many years later, I was reading a magazine article, and it said, uh, are you interested in sailing tall ships, and are you under 70? Uh, if so, uh, sail on the Winston Churchill. So I, I discovered that this ship wasn't as unlucky as I thought it was going to be when I was a little boy, and so I signed up for it. Um, <clears throat> the first voyage I did was from Lisbon, to um, <clears throat> the Canary Islands via Madeira. And it was just an absolutely cracking uh, voyage. I was sick for the first uh, two days. And um, uh, from then on, the sun came out and I really enjoyed it. Uh, so sailing for me is a kind of, um, I've managed in the years, in the 20, nearly 20 years since I've been sailing to, to um, run my life, run my business, and do sailing at the same time. So I've sailed something like 20,000 miles in my logbook since that, that first voyage, and I've sailed at various positions, um, uh, assistant engineer, um, uh, and watch leader, and um, uh, third officer, uh, as a trainee third officer. So. Anyway, the sailing has been absolutely pivotal in my life, and I've adored absolutely every minute of it. Bob. Um, Bob, okay. <clears throat> Who am I? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> my actual name is Prendip Singh Dillon. Um, I first sailed on the ships back in 1983, I believe. Um, I had no intention of going sailing whatsoever. I used to do voluntary work for the uh, Middlesex Association of Boys Clubs. Uh, I got a call when I was at college studying engineering asking me if I wanted to go sailing. Um, on the, I got the phone call on the Monday uh, asking me if I wanted to go sailing because there was a trip available on the Saturday. It turned out another young person had wanted to go sailing, had organised the trip, got himself sponsorship and everything else. And thankfully for me, broke his leg playing rugby on the weekend before. Um, it was deemed that it was too late to cancel the trip and whatever, so there was a space going, it was available. I got asked if I wanted to give it a go, as well as some other people. So I ran around college at the time quite desperately, saying, Can I have two weeks off because I'm going to do this? Um, thankfully to my, <laughs> uh, whatever, the, the college accepted it, said, OK. Uh, gave me two weeks off, which was even more of an incentive then, because I had two weeks off of college <laughs> studying engineering to go sailing. Turned up at Southampton um, for whatever tide it was. Uh, sailed away, managed two weeks going past the Isle of Wight. Uh, very good memories of the first time we went past the Isle of Wight. You, you come to a, a stretch of water that's quite disturbed. I can never remember the name of it. As you go past the Needles. Oh yes, so it's um, the Shingles Bank. Yeah. And everyone started throwing up. We had roast lamb for dinner that night. I remember <laughs> it was just coming to tea time. And uh, there wasn't really many people for dinner, to be honest with you. So I was able to eat a fair bit. Um, it got slightly cold as well, but I carried on eating being a size chap I am. Um, but yeah, a couple of rough nights, etc. But a two-week voyage, which I thoroughly loved. Um, at the end of it, I hadn't thrown up and I'd saved some aptitude in the galley. So I was invited to return again as a uh, cook's ass, as they were known at the time. It used to be called a uh, cook's mate officially, but everybody called it a cook's ass. Um, did a couple of trips then as a cook's ass. Eventually, through the time in my life where I'd left one job and was moving to another, had a few months spare, so did a refit down in Shoreham on sea. Um, I had about, well, I had the rest of my life as far as I'm concerned. It turned out to be about four months spare. Um, and 
did a refit with the ships, worked with a bosun, George Thorpe, who was an absolute beast of a man. Um, I remember conversations that one of the captains had spoke at the Queen's uh, dinner with the Queen, explaining that the bosun had fingers that were so thick he could naturally pick his own nose. Um, but that was George. He was uh, he's in the bar. Oh, is uh, he? Yeah, yeah. yeah is I he picking him. his nose? He or used to tongue look tongue? like Brutus out of Popeye. Um, a huge man, massive hands, and you know he could hold ropes that ten of us would be pulling up on and and let go. But I was fortunate enough to work with George for those three months, in which we took everything apart and we put everything back together. So literally, I learnt the ropes through that process. Um, ended up then sailing as boatswain's mate, and then after a few more trips as watch leader. Um, I've sailed then ever, since then for years afterwards and moved on to the, um, the brigs when they first came into operation with Stavros and the Prince William. Um, in fact, I've just met someone who, as you said, we, we were the first people to sail round the Land's End in a tall ship this millennium. Oh, <laughs> Not even this cool. century, because we were the first ones around there. Although the ship was falling apart as we were sailing it, because we picked it up, it was brand new. We sailed it round to Weymouth, and throughout, throughout the voyage, people came on with like bits of doors and bunks and things like that that were coming off. Um, yeah, uh, I know Andrew from my last ever trip with the Winston Churchill. Yeah, yeah, that was super. Which superb. was my first trip that I had. Uh, Sorry, the first ship I'd ever sailed on, so it was always your kind of first love. There was a lot of battles between Winston Churchill and Malcolm Miller. And actually, truth for known, I think the Malcolm Miller was a much better sailor than the Winston Churchill due to it being built afterwards. But your first love is always your first love. And the last trip we did together yeah. say, was um, a delivery trip from uh, the Canary Islands. Yeah, Santa Cruz, I think yeah, it was. Yeah, to the Azores. Yeah. Uh, Days and days of battling against wind. <laughs> the wind on the nose. Every, yes. every time, every day, the captain would come up with the chart and he would uh, have a, a pointer on it showing which way the arrow was. You know? <laughs> and we'd have the rum line showing the line we had to sail. And the wind and was just always, <laughs> not always on the nose. Yeah. But we laughed, we laughed. I mean, we laughed all, the whole of that trip. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it was an awful trip. Yeah. So I say, at, the, <laughs> at the end, when I got home, I actually remember laying in a bath and looking at myself naked, which is not something I do very often. <laughs> but the bruises that I had on me just from the, the, the just, 12 days just of from sailing, us beating you just up. trying to stand up. <laughs> you know, no, that wasn't with them beating me, I can assure you. Uh, yeah. No, but you were my boss. Uh, I was, effectively. You, you were the, the watch leader, watch and leader. I was the trainee. Yeah. And you you were... You, had the when we got to the Azores, there was this fantastic little island, a little volcanic island, and we anchored just off this island. And um, Bob, uh, because he was very important at the time, <laughs> um, was allowed to uh, drive these C the class, C class, yeah. C class uh, boats, and uh, so we'd all pile, we'd put on life jackets and pile into the C class, and then you would sort of. <laughs> take us ashore. Chug you over Ch there. Take us ashore. And um, we would all pile off and hand the things back, and you would carry on chugging back and forth. Because you yeah. were important and we yeah. weren't. Yeah, so, so I wasn't allowed on shore. But you <laughs> no, were. you weren't. Because we were working. <laughs> I was too busy working. Which I thought yeah. was really funny. Which was so important, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, cut a long story short, on that trip, I went uh, up on the top of the mountain, this volcanic mountain, and I took a photograph of the Winston Churchill down there in the bay at anchor with this tiny little C-class uh, boat um, with a tiny little orange figure in the boat. And the picture was so good that I hung it up in my bathroom. So in my bathroom every morning when I brush my teeth, <laughs> the little orange dot is old Bob here <laughs> driving this boat backwards and forwards. So uh, I just thought you ought to know. You yeah, know, well, you told me camera, I want that On picture. camera, but I'm faced with looking at you every How many times have you been morning. sick brushing your teeth <laughs> is what I want to know. 
Yeah, so uh, then we all piled back on the boat, and then we went to the main porch, which was... Which uh, was shut. Because <laughs> it was a bank holiday or something, wasn't it? It was a bank holiday in August, and yeah. the Azores were shut. The Azores were shut. <laughs> and it was pouring with rain. Howling and, wind. Uh, and uh, always, you know, on weather forecasts, they talk about the Azores high. The Azores high is where the hot weather is. That's where everybody That's sails. It dominates our summer weather. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think Bob came up with the immortal phrase, Azores high, my ass. <laughs> Something like that. But uh, I'm not sure I can say that on camera. No, not necessarily good. <laughs> But anyway, I've interrupted your, your... No, no, I think that was it. You only asked name and number of where we came from. Didn't <laughs> yeah, well, you answered the next question anyway. Which so was? Uh, what do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> so we've covered that. Do you want to go first? No, you're okay, definitely. Okay. I'm <clears> awful. <throat> um, right, so what did I get? What did Andrew McNaughton get out of sailing on a tall ship? Um, I was relatively old when I started... And the thing I got out of it was this fabulous sense of camaraderie that takes place on these ships. You, are, you arrive at Gatwick Airport and you go into the departure lounge and you look around and you think somewhere here in this departure lounge is a crew for a tall ship. And you can't see them. There's just ordinary people all around you. And then when you fly in the aeroplane, you arrive at the other end and then people come out of this crowd of ordinary people and they get on the coach and suddenly you have a crew, a crew that works together and through all adversity solves all the problems that are presented to you with the guidance of watch officers and watch leaders and the permanent crew. And so what do you get out of it? You get out a fabulous sense that you can achieve anything if everybody pulls together. Now, the reason that I am still involved with tall ships, uh, I sit on a committee raising money, is because young people can gain so much from tall ships activities. They can see how <clears throat> an organisation uh, anything that they do in life will be better if everybody works together and if they all work for the same goal and that life however difficult it is can be spiced up by young people like Bob who bring sunshine into really difficult situations just by the way they <laughs> face them so tall ship sailing taught me that there is a massive place for this type of activity with young people to give them self-confidence and to give them assurance that they are worthy members of society and can work in a team and when they work in a team they can move a mountain. So that's, that's my story.